Getting an arrow to an animal is, you know, archery. Bow hunting piece starts at impact. And if you don't think about anything else, you need to consider if you're building your arrow system to get to them or get through them. What's up everyone? It's May 26th today. Sadly, turkey season is winding down for us. In the last week to 10 days, we've still been hunting pretty hard. A bunch of the guys have been in Minnesota and Wisconsin just hammering turkeys up there. Mindy and I went out to Nebraska and South Dakota, had a really good hunt for Merriam's. So we'll have a bunch of new hunts to bring you next February and March as turkey season starts to ramp back up. But for right now, we're gonna end the turkey tour. We've got maybe one more video we'll do, kind of wrapping up the entire turkey tour. But in this video, we've got part two of our video podcast that we did with Troy Fowler, AKA the Ranch Fairy. And part one was really interesting, really informative. It's on the channel. If you go back uh, just before Turkey Tour, you can find it there. And a lot more great information here on part two on building the best arrow system for bow hunting. So real quick, before we get started here, we want to know from you guys, what kind of videos you want to see on the channel during this off season time period between turkey season and deer season. If you got something in mind, let us know in the comments below. And finally, if you give the video a like, that helps us out a lot. Again, thank you guys for the support. We'll get right to it. Part two of a video podcast with the Ranch Ferry. 760 grainers are, you know, a little over the top. Let's, <laughs> let's talk about how to set this stuff up a little bit because that's another, <laughs> that's another thing that, that we get all the time. It's like, well, I can't get it to tune or how do you tune it or how do you do it? And I know that there's a gob of information there, but just give people a roadmap there a little bit. Okay, so Ranch Ferry, there. high FOC arrow tuning, go there. But I'll run it down pretty straightforward. We just got a new part called the Ranch Ferry Special with Ethics Archery, and it has two 200, 225, 250, 275, and 300 grain field points. Believe it or not, you're a human, and you shoot a bow different than you shoot a bow, and you can't shoot my bow like I shoot my bow. So you can start with the charts, you can do the basics, but you got to shoot your bow. The real, the very simple thing to do is, if you're shooting over 60 pounds, you need to just go ahead and sack it up and get a 300 spine arrow. If you shoot a 340, it's going to go sideways. And don't call me and say it went sideways. I'm telling you, it's going sideways. So this is not what the arrow charts are going to tell you to shoot. The arrow charts don't know anything about this. They're <laughs> trying to sell you the flapper and the twizzler, and that's fine. <laughs> so get a two, get a, this is ideally what you should do. Get two 250s and two 300 spine arrows. Whatever flavor. I'm not a, I don't have a specific arrow. I'm shooting, currently shooting Black Eagle Rampage. I've shot everything. Stock inserts. Go to Ethics, get the Ranch Ferry Special. Shoot all the field point weights and accept what you see. If you shoot it through paper or shoot it bare shaft, one of them is going to tune. That's what I noticed because I mm. bought those field points and I went from 150 to 300. And I, once I got my weight, you know, I think it ended up being around 225. Right. It was shooting best. And All of a sudden. And this is bear shaft. Yep. Yeah. Bear shaft. Bear shaft paper tuning. Right. And that there were just bullet holes right. through there. But if you went up, you know, 75 grains, it would tail. Correct. Correct. Yep. That's that's you hand loading your setup. Yep. Right? Yep. That's right. If you want to go to seven or 800 grains, then you're just going to have to push that high and do the same thing. Okay? But this is for an average person. I recommend over 550. No matter what your poundage. No pound. Yeah, I don't care about yeah. pound. I'm shooting a 43-pound kid bow. Shooting yeah, 670. I know. The dick dick. Yeah, the dick dick bow. <laughs> Shoot at 40 yards. I can outrun it. Oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> so you got two 250s, two 300s. Pick your, pick your flavor. You run through the Ranch Ferry Special. You can paper, shoot it through paper, or you can bear shaft. I just shoot a bear shaft target, 10 yards. And all of a sudden, one arrow is just going to behave. If they all go one way, your bow's out of tune. If they mm. all go, well, if you're shooting 340, <laughs> they're going to go sideways. But a 300 or a 250, one of them is going to behave. If they all go the same way, you got to go back to the shop and square your bow up. That's a cam lean or some. I'm not mm. good at that part. But they'll tear this way, they'll tear that way, they'll tear up, and then all of a sudden one will just go, walk. Just accept it. <laughs> That's perfect arrow flight. Yeah, shoot it. That's what you want. Right. And then you can reverse engineer it. You can run stock inserts and run, a, you know, grown-up broadheads, or you can put some ethics inserts in there, say they're 125 grains or 150, and then your point's 125. Okay. If 225 shoots, you just do the math. Okay. You put 50-grain insert, you can do whatever. There's a gobs of different things you can you can. That's put the it. simplest thing to do. Like you can go up to a you can go up to a 200 grain broadhead. You can shoot 125 grain broadhead. Right. Just as long as your your weight 
it ends up at that at that desired point. Yep. point. Yeah. And so for some of you guys who are engineers and super anal about stuff, the inserts shoot just a little different, but kind of hair splitting there. Yeah. So just chill out, bro. And if you're going to go one direction or another, don't go heavier. Hmm. Broadheads fly heavy. They're naturally uh, pushing against the atmosphere, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So they okay. actually fly heavy. So if you're gonna if you're gonna go broadhead, lower the the system down. I am starting to I'm gonna start recommending 200 grain broadheads. That puts more of the weight forward, gets more of that point pull, and they just they're thicker and stuff. Mm -hmm. When you get a point oh seven thick broadhead that's razor sharp, they're gonna survive. They got these people. Oh, I got a point oh three five. Woo! <laughs> I can take a pair of pliers and snap that yeah. stuff. And they think that really, really thin edge is good, and it is good, until it's going 260 feet per second, and it's not good. We've been picking on the mechanicals a lot, but anything that's got an abrupt edge, so we see some very aggressive angles on a lot of the, on a lot of the fixed blades too, you're actually forcing the flat to hit the bone this direction as opposed to come in like that. And there's not a sword fighting movie on earth <laughs> where some is <laughs> running sideways with his sword like this, <laughs> slamming people. No, <laughs> none. <laughs> the guy running like this is dead. <laughs> you run with your sword sideways like this and slam it into people, what's going to happen? I'm, I, that's, it's a funny example, yep. but it's exactly what is happening. The blades are up like this, and they're actually being forced into the bone as opposed to coming in a little bit more angled, which is mm. what you would do with a saw right. or anything else. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you start out like bare shaft tuning and, and tuning different weights. You talk about knock tuning, too, and that seems... Black magic. Yeah. So that's that level seems, two. It's like so, so simple. Though, like, I am very stupid about this stuff. Like, I mean. Did you knock tune yours? I saw you got the yeah. Ranch Ferry arrows and numbers on it. So you yeah. knock tuned them. Yeah. And then marked that one up because you're shooting all white. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So knock tuning is mm -hmm. carbon arrows have a stiff side and a soft side. And I've got people email me all the time. Listen, just float them in water. And whichever weighs up, that's good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the human is shooting the bow. Again, you can't shoot my bow as right. good as I can shoot my right. bow. and So you, once you've figured out what arrow wants to fly with your point weight, you take every individual arrow. It's boring as hell, and I am total Fakes ADD, them. and it is not my thing, but it really helps consistency. You'll find the one that shoot. Just take one arrow, run through the Ranch Ferry Special, and shoot one, and you'll see one that behaves. And then you put that weight on every individual arrow, and you shoot it, and it'll go like that. And you'll say, well, it's not tuned. Uh-uh. Rotate arrow. the knot. It's unbelievable what will happen. Rotate the knot. Do it on every single arrow. Every single arrow. Treat them arrow. all differently. Right. If you shoot uh, factory fletched, do the same thing. Number every one of them on the, on the vein. And you'll see one or two that just misbehave. Knock tune those. And it, if, the knock, if the color of the fletch is a little different, you're going to have to accept that you might have to <laughs> rotate the other one up. I'm sorry. That's why I went with all white. <laughs> right. Well, I like all white because you can see it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But uh, you turn the knock until the thing hits plumb, and then you mark it with a Sharpie, and you go to the next one and the next one. And it's boring. I hate getting a dozen arrows. Yeah. <laughs> I can't do it for about – I do about four, and I go inside. That's what I did. Yeah. I did a half dozen of them. And I need to pop Zannies or do some <laughs> downers or something. <laughs> 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 and then within your dozen – because they manufacture them miles at a time, if you have two or three that mm. don't behave, expect that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Your top mm. performers should be set aside. That's your hunting arrows. Yep. And the crappiest performers, you mark them for field points, and you shoot them with your friends, shoot them at your friends. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Disclaimer, and don't do yeah, that. You're not gonna hit, <laughs> yeah, you're not going to hit them anyway because they're crappy. They don't they fly to the side. So oh, okay. shoot right by them. Yeah, just curve around them. Right, right, right. So uh, yeah. that's how you do that, and then you can actually – the lot of arrows you can allocate to different purposes and you'll be fine. Mm, yep. And it's super, super fun. What well, Big Mike Tanaka, uh, he worked on me for a long time before I accepted the knock tuning thing and it's, hmm. it's black magic. Once you get that, so you got this high FOC arrow points pull in the shaft, you found the weight that shoots the best with your, you doing it, and then they're knock tuned, the accuracy is unbelievable. Mm, yep. And the broadhead accuracy you can just screw them on, make sure they spin straight, and they'll fly. Now, veins, mm -hmm. feathers, does any of that matter? Blazer veins? I hand-cut my own fletchings, so I buy five-inch mm. feathers, 
and I cut them two inches long and half an inch tall, squared off at the back. I mean, they're they're like as big as my thumb. Mm-hmm. You don't need any you don't need any fletching once they fly. Right. Yep. You get that much FOC yep. and you knock tune, you bear shaft tune. The arrow's naturally coming off perfect. The only mistakes after that are you. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. So if you make a mistake, then the vein's correct. I say a lot of crazy crap, and my presentation style is a little off the, char- <laughs> off the charts for this world. It's certainly called the ranch fairy. doesn't fit the freaking flat bill muscle <laughs> tan guys. Fine. But um, long and short of it is I am all about you becoming more effective. If you do what I tell you, you will be better. Yep. Yeah. Like when you're talking about, too, I know you told me about shooting hogs in the shoulder yep. and it slicing it like butter. Yep. That's like, how can I do that? I want right. to do that. Because yeah. if you can do that with a hog, you think I can do that deer. with a buck. Well, oh, yeah. the vital V is not shoulder blade. If the paddle's up here, elbow's right, here. Right. Mm-hmm. The hole on a deer is that big. It's all rib cage. It's nothing different. And right through there, if you whistle it through there, oh, my God. Toast. That's fantastic. when the blood sprays oh, yeah. out. Right. And you can see it on some deer, at least. Like, you can see the rough outline yeah. of, mm-hmm. of that shoulder blade, of the vital V you're talking right. about. Yes. You need to be in front, front of or on the crease, lower one-third, right above the yeah. elbow. Yeah. They're not going to jump up. And then if, if they drop, they're going down. That is good point. And they're always going down. Yeah. And, and, and I think, just to simplify it again, it's like when you're aiming for that V, a lot of guys don't aim there because they're worried about hitting – those bones, basically the, the the humorous, yeah, that's the humorous. Yeah. Yep. And like you're saying, with this heavier arrow setup, even if you hit that, you're good. It's going through. Right. Worst case scenario, you hit the other other side of the thoracic wall, and that's a double lunger, and they're down. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Right. And I'm that's not just encouraging. A total game listen, I want to be very clear. I'm not encouraging irresponsible shots. I'm telling that's the most devastating shot you can make. Yeah. Once again, back to what we talked about. So if you're the, if you're shooting broadside this way, here's the lungs and you're aiming behind the crease, and the deer quarters too, you've now shot one lung, punched the liver, and you're going out the guts, and that's a four. You should leave him four hours. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You shouldn't. You should just stop, no matter what you shoot him with. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If, if you're worried about the bones, then only take quartering away or real true broadside shots. Mm-hmm. I'm okay with that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I got no problem with you passing it and saying, I'm being ethical. That's the way I roll. Great. You've been getting all the fairy dusters here lately That's the fairy what. duster has been a fun thing my uh, friend came up with that idea <laughs> and having the uh he said you need to get you off the camera yeah i like that those videos recently are like real subscriber results where there's mm-hmm. people that have changed like us and went to that and then killed something and sent you the coolest one is the three queens and then that kid that kid was shooting 32 pounds he was shooting a 385 grain arrow that was 33 percent the point was 225. <laughs> Holy cow. 17 yards on an Iowa doe. I've not seen an Iowa doe, but I understand they're rather large. They, yes. Yeah, compared to the are. rats we see in Texas. <laughs> yes. The Jimmy Buffett deer are kind of lean. <laughs> <and sad. laughs> he shot smooth through that deer at 17 yards with a 32 pound bow. Yeah. That arrow's going 100 feet per second. Yeah, right. I should tell you something right there. He said the yeah. deer just went whoop and down. Mm. And then I've got three ladies that were shooting 40 pounds. One of them wasn't shooting 40 pounds, and she killed a Pope and Young deer, complete pass through with 525 grains. You just keep your sh- your sh- shot short, yep. make the right shot. She shot completely through a Pope and Young Midwest whitetail with 40 some with 40 pounds or 38, 24 yeah. inch draw length. You want to talk about somebody who's completely the opposite of everything we talk about? No yeah, poundage, right, no right. draw length, no. You know, you got no push going, and she shoots straight through a deer, and we can't yeah. do this on TV. Yeah, right. Well, yeah, 2017, I shot a three-and-a-half-year-old buck, nice Iowa buck, seven yards, yeah. didn't pass through. Fletchings were still sticking out yeah. behind the shoulder, no major bone, couldn't, didn't she pass didn't through. So, so was that just a regular arrow? Yes. Okay, yeah. so that's an interesting point. Further away is actually better. Because the arrow's still paradoxing in the air. Seven yard shots with light setups, that yep. arrow's doing this, yep. and it already hits doing that. Yep. I got you. And it doesn't have that. time to stabilize yet. Right. Dr. Ashby said, you know, I never wanted to be inside 10 with a stick bow. Interesting. Because right. my arrows are still paradoxing. Yeah. Yeah. About 10 yards, it's, it's it hit plum. And he spot. said, you know, you get 12 yards away from a buffalo, 
and you could just see it. Yeah. And we just Whoa. zip 12 yards. Right? That's the thing, man. Like, that's the that's where the rubber met the road for me. It's like between you and Ashby, all these animals are dying on these setups. And, like, you're just not seeing the issues that we're talking about. Well, the issues like, reduce to shot – really do reduce to shot placement mm -hmm. and misjudging yardage, which is shot placement. Yeah. Yeah. But nothing else. Yeah. So you don't have everything else that could possibly be a weird deal. You get broadheads flattened. You get breakage. You get snapped off. You get curved. You get these redirects. None of that occurs. Yeah. So you've reduced the number of possibilities that will happen to you, causing a lot of flashlights yeah. to be burned up yep. all night long, being sad. Well, and what Nobody the, wants to be sad. No. Nah. <laughs> and what the dog trackers have said, and that's a really good idea that you guys are working with them, um, because every single one of them says – Pass-through shots are more lethal. Like, we've, we oh, yeah. find the deer yep. when the arrow passes through. Yep. That's, like, the first question they ask when you call. Yeah. Shane's, Shane's got data on that. It's like, are you shooting for a big hole and, you know, not an exit wound, or you are you want, blowing you clean through? Really, right. well, that's the, what they're seeing. So there's a couple things going on there. An, an arrow left in the wound, we all – you'll hear this, but in emergency medicine, if there's a penetrating object, they leave it in. Yep. And then you go to the hospital, they set up the surgery suite, then they pull it. So there's a cardiothoracic surgeon waiting for you to start spraying like crazy. Yeah. They've got everything heated up, and they're going to start burning things until they stop it. Yeah. Oof. But you don't pull it on sight, okay? So do we <laughs> want to leave an arrow on an animal? Well, the ER guys would say no. Because Not unless it puts you can walk pressure. up to it and pull it out. Right. <laughs> right. Well, yeah, right. It. Okay, if you can pull it out and let them run off, yeah, you're great. <laughs> right? Just tie but, a string to it and shoot them and pull it right out. Right, it actually puts <laughs> pressure on the wound. And hmm. your body just kind of works with it. And right. Keeps yeah, you that makes total sense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you just want you, two things you want to pass through. One is that. Second is it's not in them. Yeah. There's no secondary negative response when they've been right. shot. Right. That they realize when they run by Wait, a tree and it hits. That? And then they yeah. really go, what the hell now? Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. never happened. Well, you've to me, seen, you know? I, I mean, I've, I've seen video where deer's hit, arrow's sticking in him, and he goes. Yep. And he's just like, wait, what is that? Yep. And then it's like, then they go again, or they now yep. know something is completely wrong. Yep. Where, like we're saying, you zip it through them, and they're just like, they just take off running. They just take off bound and like bounding away like nothing. They made well, well think, yep. I was going to say, this year, I mean, I think it, you watch our videos and the hits we put on the deer with the single bevel cut on contact broadheads. I think it's undeniable to see that the reactions are different yep. than previous years. Oh, you yeah. got deer that are just <laughs> Jake shot that one deer that didn't just, even run. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He just stood yeah. there like, yep. Like he was, a little, he was a little horned up. Exactly. I'm standing right here. That's exactly what happened. He went like six feet. Yeah. Yeah. Shot him and yeah. then took a few steps. And I've had a bunch like of Like bristled up. Like he thought that he got time oh, or yeah. something. Right. He yeah, almost yeah. bristled up and like laid his ears back. And then he's like. Well, lights cool. out. And yeah. Lights done. Out. Yeah. yeah. And that's, that's obviously, that was the ideal example. The first deer he shot in that canola bean field or whatever, they sat there for an eternity, was freaking textbook. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it, it, the deer bounds, 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 and it just stops. It didn't stop yep. walking. It down. Yep. Yeah. Right. The only thing we, he and I talked about that, and he said we had a hard time getting blood. I said you were in five foot tall. Oh yeah, beans, it's a, man. It's a hell yeah. of a time finding blood yeah. and stuff yeah. like that. It's and tough. Burn it. Yeah. We'll find the deer. <laughs> 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 Farmer be a little pissed off. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, he did offer to pay for the canola. This time, <laughs> yeah, so. yeah, no, yeah. that was really, really cool. Yeah. That was a really, really cool episode. Yeah. I get this a lot starting in July. The elk hunters start coming. <laughs> <laughs> and their only concern is hitting an elk. They're not concerned with killing an elk. They think they're, gonna, they're talking about killing an elk, but they say, we want to be able to shoot 80. Right. Fine. Are you going to penetrate an elk? Well, yeah, it's going to hit them. Uh, okay, <laughs> wow. The speed degradation. Big Mike's the only person crazy enough to that I know sets his chrono up at 100 and shoots through it. The speed, he runs 83 pounds. So for all you guys who are big, strong guys, he's 83, 31 <laughs> inches. Okay, so he's got all the juice in the world. Yeah. A 450 grain arrow, if I remember the chart correctly, loses 40 feet per second in 100 yards. Okay. A 1,000 grain arrow lost 10. So you've done math on this kinetic energy stuff, which is BS, at launch. Mm -hmm. You're not doing kinetic energy at impact. Yeah. And the and gold that's tip the one chart, that that's correct. And the gold tip chart would tell you at impact, you're shooting a gopher arrow. <laughs> it's just logic. Everything's done at launch. 
But when it hits, you're shooting a gopher arrow. But when you shoot the heavier arrows, they launch slower and they don't slow down. And then secondarily, you have the mass at impact. And that's the old mm -hmm. ping pong ball baseball right. analogy. Yeah. Throw a ping pong ball at me all day, just don't hit me with a baseball. Yeah. And so you have the help, you have this high efficiency broadhead, you have the mass, you have the FOC, you have something else other than speed that's rapidly pouring off like water out of a bucket. Yeah. Mm. I'm going to do a video on that. I'm going to do some more detailed stuff with that Mike. That would be nice. Yeah. Because it's a pretty cool chart. A 1,000 yeah. grain arrow lost 10 feet per That's second. That's wild. Yeah, Are you that crazy? crazy? Right? And it still weighs 1,000 grains. <laughs> right. Yeah. Have you ever held a 1,000 grain arrow? They're awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like I like to go to the bow shop. Yeah. Hey, man, can you tune my bow? Walk. <laughs> Set yeah. that thing down with a field point like that yeah, long. Been, no kidding. It's. I've went and I've tried to get it help and some some people in some archery shops have been super helpful some at others have been like no that's going to ruin your bow that your bow's going to blow up you need to be i'm you know, actually i'm actually talking to ata about doing a talk next next year and doing doing our ashby foundation presentations with pass throughs on cape buffalo and stuff we have yeah, some cool awesome. videos yeah. complete pass through on a cape buffalo getting an arrow to an animal is arch is is, is you know archery bow hunting piece starts at impact hmm. And if you don't think about anything else, you need to consider if you're building your arrow system to get to them or get through them. There's too much emphasis on the launch piece and not enough emphasis on the impact piece. And that is a humongous problem. Yep. Mm -hmm. So I said this a couple times, just peruse the, the ranch ferry. I'm yep. not, nothing Check I tell you, nothing I tell you is going to hurt you. There's a lot of good info Nothing there. I tell you is going to hurt you. I watch, yeah. I've watched every yeah. single one. It's no. really fun. I, yeah. I enjoy making the videos, and the, uh, I know you're a little bit more organized. Somebody here is organized. Is it you? <laughs> Who's the as, organized as a, one? As who, as makes, who makes y'all pick up the head like 15 times and get the shots and all that? <laughs> oh. That's you? <laughs> oh, yeah. okay. that guy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If we do video, it's going to be a little... You're going to have to give me some drugs or something. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do the script. I'm not as bad I totally I'm not wing bad everything. I'm just like, yeah. well, today I'm going to talk about this. And I start talking. I'm like, yeah, blah, 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 and stuff pops in my head, and I just keep going. And, <laughs> and all this stuff, I mean, it, it may seem intimidating if you're switching to this, because I've already had this, this know. you know discussion with a lot of guys. They're like, man, I want to do that, but then they'll send me what they're thinking of, and I'm like, you're going from a 100-grain head to a 125-grain head <laughs> on the same arrow. <laughs> Woo! Like, yeah, you're you're moving that direction, jump, but we need to <laughs> we need to push you a little bit further. And like, well, I don't know if it'll tune. It's like, no, you can do it all. Have you seen like your subscribership grow? Uh, the amount of uh, correspondence grow in the last well, however long you've been doing it. Like, is there more and more interest in what you're talking about? It, there is. There's a bunch of people who are in the sidelines. Like, they got my friend has a medical disorder. You know. Yeah. Trying to find out all this information. They don't want to tell their buddies. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like a psychological counselor for half the damn planet. Um, there's just a lot of people who say, you know, I'm the guy, I'm the typical guy, I've bonked a few, just want a, less of a chance of bonking. Yeah. I prob most of the setups, I'm pushing people at between 525 and 550 and just yep. getting them to go to shoot a Magnus. Right. Just yep. get them over that first step. Right. I don't try to force everybody to, oh, you only shoot 650, little boom. That's BS. Yeah. You get over 525, I recommend 550. You, you'll you see it mm -hmm. from what you've done before. Yeah. yeah. I went from about 490 to 600. Yeah. And it's like yeah. huge, I'm, huge difference. I think like I'm at those like 480. things are just trucking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm shoot, it's shooting well, but I, again, it's like, why not Why not take it that extra step and just keep keep improving your setup like it. it's like yeah i know I, I, i'm excited about it i am excited about it yeah yep. there you go yep. single level baby yep. there you yep. go oh i'm looking forward to it all right well i'm sure <laughs> i'll be collaborating on the sidelines your psychological counselor <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> yep and y'all well, guys need to come down thanks troy yeah, 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 yeah man. appreciate, appreciate it. it that was, appreciate that was it. fun this is good, good thanks for all the people out there yeah i'm crazy but do what i say it works yeah snort the fairy dust that's right see you guys later see you later